realize now why people invite me back to stage their houses when they move into their new house because my house smells amazing. It's so clean and I have cookies on the counter. Hi, welcome to the house of Valentina. I'm Valentina and today we are at my home. One of the things that people ask me all the time is why stage the house? A lot of times people think that it's superfluous or it's just silly. It's not something that needs to be done. They think it's just extra. The truth is it's totally extra. It's totally extra, but it's gonna get you results. 97% of buyers are looking online nowadays to choose their home, which means my clients are sending me listings that they've seen and they say, I wanna go see this house. You have three seconds to get your buyers to click on your photos and I am not kidding you, sometimes I cannot drag my clients to a listing because they have seen those photos online and they won't move. They will not go visit that house. So your photos are so important. I, I really think you've got milliseconds in which your buyer decides whether your house is going to be amazing, it's gonna be their dream home, or mm, it's gonna go somewhere on the bottom of the list. If there's time, maybe we'll go see it. What it means <laughs> to stage your house is that not only do we get them to click on your photos online, but you're gonna go to the top of the list you're gonna be one of the first ones they wanna see. And what I like most about it is it means multiple offers for you. I mean, I don't think I have to explain multiple offers, right? Multiple offers means people are competing for your home. And even though there might be three other houses on your street, they want yours and they are willing to pay extra for it. That is what we want. I love being able to make my sellers extra money because in the end, what that does is it sets them up for the next adventure that they are about to embark on. And who doesn't wanna have a little extra cash in your pocket for that? Some of the things that I do that are a little bit different than everybody else, I shoot magazine style. And at first, <laughs> it kind of freaked out some people because it's different. It's really different. It means that the lights are turned off. Other real estate agents a lot of times look at me like I'm nuts but my listings get 30% more views or higher on Zillow and other um, online sites, and they get number one ratings. Pretty much every single time that I've ever listed a house, they've got that number one rating, and that's because people aren't just clicking on those photos, they're saving and then they're visiting. I wanna help you make lots of money, and what we need to do is give your home its day at the spa. So we are gonna pamper it, we're gonna do all the things that you don't normally do. This isn't the same as a lot of the video content that I post where we're talking about designing a space to live in, that's different, okay? Now, a lot of times my sellers love what I do so much to their home that they invite me back to come and stay, stage their new houses. And I say stage with air quotes because I don't actually use that word in real life. It's something that a lot of people know what it means, but I really don't like that word because what we really do, going back to that idea of the spa, is we style your house. We style it up like we would for a magazine shoot and we just give it its day of glory. So we pull out all the stops, it's gonna smell good, it's gonna look good and your buyers are gonna be so quick to write offers, you will not believe how amazing this is. So I've got a few tips that I'm gonna share with you today. These tips are the final step. So I have a client right now been working with them in Florida, and we have walked through the renovation, we've walked through getting the furniture back in place, and this is the final step right before the photographer comes. It's just those little bitty tiny things that really just push your house over the edge, and we'll have those buyers clicking on your photo, visiting and putting in offers before you can even blink. So we're gonna start on the curb appeal, which of course you guys are probably not surprised that we need to start on the exterior of the home because the first shot that we have to put in the listing is the outside of the home. 
So we've gotta make sure the outside of the home looks amazing. And I can tell you right now, my house is not ready to be listed. And I'll go and I'm gonna show you why and then I'm gonna walk you around my house and show you all the little tips and tricks and all the little things that I do to make your listing really stand out. Before we go outside and get this thing started, I just wanted to tell you that I started this video yesterday, so it's just taken me a little bit of time. I wanted to do a really good job for you and really show you what I do. So it's taken me a little longer to put the video together, but I think it's gonna be worth it. And what I hope that you'll get out of this is some really great tips and some actual visuals of what I'm doing while I'm doing it so that you can replicate it yourself. So let's go outside and get this thing started. The exterior of my house doesn't pass snuff for several reasons. First of all, I need to trim these bushes and I always recommend that my clients have either their landscaping company um, come just before they're gonna list or if they're DIYers, go ahead and get out there and trim your bushes really good. Replace plants that just, you know, don't look their best. Go ahead and replace them with something that just looks extra, extra good. Some of the other things that I need to do are picking up debris. It's just a bit of a mess right now. It just rained and the yard just looks kind of, you know, just not as best. A hose being unwound and kind of drug across the driveway. It's not really the best look. This little area back here behind me is just looking sad and lonely. So I'm gonna grab some plants. I have this really, really funny. <laughs> Oh my God, <laughs> I am not making this up. This is what is on my door right now because we're getting ready for Halloween and I think it's hilarious. It's so funny that I've got this crazy little bust that greets my guests. And a lot of times people will ask me, can I have a seasonal wreath on the door? Like at Christmas time. Okay, so what I always suggest is that you have items on your front door that are universal. They can be seasonal, but not holiday driven because not everybody celebrates Halloween. There are some people that would love this and they would buy your house because of it, but the majority of people would be a little bit freaked out by it. Um, so we don't want them to be freaked out by your house. Now, the other thing that's really funny about my porch right now is that the candles have literally melted. That is how hot it has been in Atlanta. So. I need to replace those candles with something that's more appropriate and I need to bring some florals up here. The first thing that your buyers are going to notice the minute they walk in the door, if you haven't freaked them out with the Halloween decorations, is the temperature. It's almost 100 degrees outside today, so the minute I walk in this house and it is cool, that means the air conditioning works and I am not kidding you. I can't tell you how many times a buyer walks in the door and says, well, at least we know the air conditioning works. Please, please climatize your house. Now, I'm hiding down here below. The other thing that you need to be aware of more than anything else in your entire house, if there's one thing that you do, it could possibly actually trump the AC, because that can be fixed. People are gonna walk in their door and they're gonna go like this. <sighs> I kid you not, they do it every single time. The minute they walk in the door, they are smelling for warning signs. They wanna know, is there mildew? Is there mold? Is there a pet that's gonna like smell in this house forever? Is there cigarette smoke? All those things in those micro, micro little milliseconds, the moment they walk in the door and... Okay, so what we wanna do is in return is make sure that your house smells divine. Make sure that you get that pet smell out of your house because I see houses sitting on the market for all eternity because it smells like a pet or I mean, obviously if you have a mold issue or a mildew, that needs to be dealt with before you ever put your house on the market. So we're gonna assume that those things are all in order. I always tell my clients, please, whatever you do, do not cook fish, do not cook any polarizing spices. I suggest something that smells like a sugar cookie. I know that that sounds kind of cliche, but I'm telling you, it does work. Now, when I say sugar cookie, sometimes people go out and they buy all those plug-in things. Please do not buy the plug-ins. If you have them, take them out of the wall. They are such a turn off to buyers. They reek. 
and my mom has them. So I tell my mom, mom, you've got to take those out. And she's like, but I love them. So it's, it's fine when it's your house, but this is no longer your house. You're trying to sell it to somebody else. And those people don't like those plugins in general. Every now and then somebody likes it, but usually what it does is it makes people think you're trying to mask some other smell. One thing that my house does not struggle with and a lot of my clients' houses do. You can see it, it's almost messing up the camera here. It's all this natural light. I know, I know you paid a lot of money for those blinds, but I am telling you right now, they will make your house dark and you will make less money on your house with those blinds shut, trying to show how much money you spent on the blinds. You are gonna give up money trying to show how much money you spent on the blinds when what you should be doing is showing how much light your house has. So one of the very first things that I do when I walk into somebody's house, I immediately start pulling the blinds down, literally raising the blinds if they're the traditional blinds. And if they have plantation shutters, I walk through the house, I open every single one of them. The rapture happened and my son just disappeared into thin air and all we've got left is his clothes. We've even got a balloon, which has a really great story. My neighbors thought that my birthday was a month early and left me the sweetest balloon on my mailbox. Do buyers want to know all of that? No, they don't want to know all that. I'm a great person and so are you, but your buyers don't want to know who you are. They're not buying you. You are leaving the house. They're buying the house. So what I need to do is I need to actually just simply clean up. I need to declutter. This is a great time to buy baskets for toys. There's usually toys lying around here. There's usually just stuff everywhere. I'm gonna throw this into the laundry bin. I may even go so far as to throw my dirty laundry in the back of my car when I leave because I actually don't want people to have to see my dirty laundry. Now I know, I know, I'm going really far, but these little details are that important. You guys know that I generally hate formulas, but when I'm putting together a living room, I generally follow these little guidelines. I will have one blanket that I throw kind of like this. I want it to feel approachable. Over here, that one's gonna stay the same. This one, I'm actually gonna flip this around. That little pattern is really nice, and I'm gonna give him the karate chop, okay? so. I don't want it to look like I tried too hard. I want it to look like it just happened that way. If it looks like you tried too hard, people get the sense that maybe you needed to try so hard because something wasn't quite right. And it's got like this off feeling. So what I want is to make it really cozy. I'm gonna grab one with some pattern. I generally keep these things fairly neutral and then add the life back in with really great plants, books, and those sorts of things. Very simple decor, but make sure you don't strip it. Leave a few books, leave some greenery, fill the base with greens, and make it feel alive and warm and welcome. So I've got this art piece that's gonna go up here. Okay, so I'm gonna put this art piece up here. The picture that was in here before was more fashion oriented, and if I'm selling my house, I don't want my personal taste to get in the way of someone else. So I replaced it with something that's very neutral and very earthy and very sweet. And I'm just gonna put this up here to finish this wall. Now, I just have too many things over here. Um, this huge stack of books, magazines. This is my real life. This is how I enjoy the space, but not everybody is a magazine hoarder, so I'm just gonna reduce some of it. So again, we're not stripping, we're being purposeful, we're gonna leave certain things, but we're gonna take out the extra, like the hoarder stuff. Even if your buyers are not avid chefs and cooks and long lounders in the bathtub, your kitchen and your bathroom, particularly your master bathroom, are always gonna be your number one selling items with your house. People just want really nice kitchens and they want really nice bathrooms. We're gonna get to the bathroom in a minute, but I have 
quite a few tips to go through on your kitchen. What you really want to convey to your buyers is that your kitchen is fully functioning, that it's very clean, that it's well maintained, and they don't want to look at your dirty dishes and your messes. And finally, you want them to feel like there's more room in this kitchen than they even need. That is huge. Okay, so one of the first things that I do is I go through the kitchen and I just clean, just clean. Get the dishes, put them in the dishwasher, and I know this is taking it a step further, but please run your dishes. When somebody opens that dishwasher, and they will because they're checking out the whole house, kicking the tires and seeing what it's gonna be like, they open the dishwasher and they smell last night's food and it's crusted on the plates and all of your good efforts to show that you have cleaned this house are ruined in that moment. Take your trash out. The last thing you want is for people to smell gross stuff in your kitchen. I've stood here for a couple minutes and debated whether if I was staging my house to sell, I would take down, if I would take down my artwork. I'm gonna leave the frame, I'm gonna switch out the art inside because it does feel a little bit polarizing. Some of the things that I really like to do is minimize a little bit of the clutter. You don't want it to feel too full. So there's no formula, you just kinda wanna have it feel like it's inviting, it's cozy, but it's not overly cluttered. Or the worst thing would be for people to feel like there wasn't enough room in your pantry for all your stuff. I've done a couple little things over here. I unplugged the toaster, but because I purposely bought a really pretty toaster that I could put out, this one's gonna stay out. Generally, I would put ugly appliances away because if they don't add to the character or charm of a kitchen, we don't wanna see them. But this is very charming because it feels like this very breakfast station, which is literally how we use this area. And I just added some greens and I took out the candy dish that was there. Now, in the meantime, I've created a bit of a mess and normally I keep my sponge sitting right down here in the sink. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe this down really quick and make sure it's all really, really shiny and pretty and new looking. And I'm gonna take all this ugly stuff and I'm gonna tuck it underneath the sink. And then I'm gonna make sure that there is cute soap sitting out on the kitchen counter because Dawn and Palm Olive and all those other stuff, it is practical, but nobody wants to see your practical stuff when they are buying your house. I have um, herbs growing by the window. Even if you're not going to keep up with this long term, at least for the pictures, for the day of listing and through the open house, keep herbs by the window or in your kitchen somewhere to give the idea of life because we're gonna minimize the stuff in here and that can feel a bit soulless. And the last thing we want is for people to feel like your kitchen has no heart and soul. Okay, so make sure you've got some really great herbs. This is just too much stuff right now. Overstuffed drawers are the first warning sign to your buyers that there is not enough room in this house for everything. People are going to open your drawers and your cabinets, so you've got to make sure that they are decluttered and that they are clean and that you give your buyers the impression that there is plenty of room in this house. If the cabinet is so full that it doesn't even close, not good, not good, okay? So this is again an issue of organize, clear out, and get your pantry to look designer. We don't necessarily want all this extra stuff in here, okay? So I know that you need to actually live in your house, but decant your cereals into pretty jars and get some little bins and just corral your things and empty it. Because when somebody opens that pantry and it just looks amazing, you have inspired them that they are gonna have this amazing life in this kitchen and it's just gonna be glorious. Every time I take this magnet down off the refrigerator, my son comes and puts it back up on the refrigerator. So I don't normally have a lot of magnets. I know that a lot of you have magnets all over your fridge. Just take them off, okay? Just take them off and 
If Landon complains that his picture is no longer there, you can tell him that it's been packed so that we make sure it gets to the new house and we don't wanna lose it. So definitely take down your magnets. And oh my God, please, 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 please clean out your refrigerator. There is nothing more disgusting than opening the fridge and smelling somebody's rotten food. In the time that it's taken me to do everything else, I've got it all done and I'm just gonna pull out this cookie and show you. That's what we're going for, a browned cookie. Now I'm gonna throw some extras in here and put them on a little plate because I think that baked goods sitting out on the counter is really, really cute. So I'm gonna do a little bit extra because I wanna have something sitting out, but you could just as easily have bought something at the store and put it out like on a cute little tray. It just feels all homey and that's what you want. You want your kitchen to feel homey. Bedrooms are another one of those spaces that, particularly the master, people do not like feeling like someone else has been living in that room and, you know, doing things besides sleeping. So what we want to do is what hotels do. Think through luxury hotels, how they set up a room. That is how you should set up your master bedroom for when you're going to sell your house. So one of the things that I always do is I make sure that all the linens are extremely clean. I almost always put a big fluffy white duvet down at the end of the bed. I really want to give that impression of luxury, even if it's just a $10 bouquet of roses from the grocery store. I have several tips. First of all, always burn a candle in your bathroom because even if someone hasn't been in the bathroom anytime recently, it's nice to walk in and it feel light and airy. So my second tip is please do not leave the fan running in the bathroom, please. It's gross. And please, please put the toilet seat down. It is disgusting to walk in and the toilet seat's up. Just don't, just put the toilet seat down and see how like real life people have things out on their counters and they don't always put everything away. When it's time to sell your house, you need to put all of your toiletries away. Um, please try to minimize them to only what you absolutely have to have in those cabinets. Just like the kitchen, you want people to be able to open the cabinets and feel like there is plenty of room for them to store everything. Obviously, you want the space to be extra clean, extra sterile in the sense that it doesn't feel like anyone has ever been in here but that someone would like to come in here. That's what you want your bathroom to feel like. So I always take down the towels because nobody's been in here lately, right? We want to give the impression that no one's been in here anytime recently. Not like, oh my God, did they just literally take a shower, use the toilet and just leave? Oh, we don't want that impression. I guess it's just so bad when you walk into a house and someone does that. So take down the towels. Clean up your shampoos, your conditioners, and minimize it to only the things that are absolutely necessary. If your shampoos and your conditioners are not pretty like this, put them away. Just don't even have them out. So I suggest, like the kitchen, this is another space where pretty soap pumps are so important. Paper towels and toothbrushes and shaving cream and all that stuff needs to go away. Clean it up, make it as minimal as you can, but don't forget to add in a little bit of life. Do you see how I've got a little plant there? This is actually a really good thing. I'm getting ready to redo my entire closet. So my closet is not a good example of how your closet should be staged. What you really want is your closet to look like you have extra space. So if I was staging my house, I would reduce this by half. I realize now why people invite me back to stage their houses when they move into their new house because my house smells amazing. It's so clean and I have cookies on the counter. When you're moving, oh my gosh, if you can make your house feel like 
a million dollars or if it's a million dollar listing, maybe two or three, you will make so much money back. So I know that this was a little bit of a longer video than what I normally do. And I know that it was just utterly packed with so much information, but um, leave me your questions that you have. Leave me your tips, things that you've done before that you think have sold your house um, really, really fast and for top dollar. Um, and I hope that you've enjoyed this video and that you will be able to apply these things to your home when you're selling. I really realized how challenging it is to separate myself from my things. So if you need more help, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'm always happy to be able to help and I will see you very, very soon. And best of luck selling your house. I'll see you soon. Bye.